Oh, y'all keep me going for me. I'm the darkest thing on this show tonight. Oh, that's right, that's right. So I'm starting off telling y'all a little bit about myself. I'm 42 years old, turned 42 last month. And I have no kids, like none at all. And I know what some of y'all are thinking, a 42-year-old black man with no kids. It's like I was being told jokes by a unicorn. <laughs> but actually, my brand of unicorn has been scientifically classified. I have the domesticated Negrus no kidicus. <laughs> and when I prance around, instead of hearing clippity clop, you hear, no, baby mama trauma, no, baby mama trauma. <laughs> Currently in a relationship, relatively new relationship. When I was single, I found out that being shy as I am, I know some of you find that hard to believe, but being shy, found that internet dating actually worked way better for me, because it's easier on the ego, you know? Think about it, you send a woman an inbox message, she doesn't respond, no harm, no foul, you move on to the next. But in a bar or a club, when a guy approaches one of you women and he is not your type, oh, you women can be brutal, you can. Just, hey, how you doing this evening? <laughs> Girl, tell the truth. Is there something about the way I look make somebody that ugly think he got a shot with me? <laughs> I see some of y'all didn't find that joke funny. But that's okay, because it's based off a true story, and I didn't find that shit funny either. Because <laughs> back in the day, before there was internet dating, there was phone dating. You pass your number through a mutual friend, and I'll pass my number to a young lady. We started a relationship. Everything was going good. That L word got dropped once or twice. We did the whole hang-up game. You hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Mom in the background. Hang up the damn phone! <laughs> But then all of a sudden we met in person and she acted all cold and distant toward me and I couldn't understand why. So I asked her flat out, I was like, hey, what's going on? I, I thought that we had a connection, what's going on? Swear, this is what she said to me, y'all. She said, um, you're actually uglier than I thought you would be. <laughs> Which means she came into the whole thing prepared for ugly, but not this level of ugly. <laughs> really fucks up your self-esteem. I'm currently in a relationship now, a relatively new relationship with my girl. She's here with me tonight. And, and I'm kind of glad because it almost didn't occur. Because we had a couple of great first dates, had ourselves some fun, you know what I mean? And then she decided to announce to me one day that she actually was not sexually attracted to me. And being that she's 10 years older than me, it proved that obviously out of shape, middle-aged sex wasn't enough to seal the deal. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Wrote a couple of jokes about her, thinking we were gonna last for a while, like she likes to crochet. So I was like, well, nobody better ever buy her a gift card to Hobby Lobby, or I'll never get any. <laughs> and then she told me she wanted to stop seeing me. I found myself wanting to buy her like 50 balls of yarn and have her knit me a bunch of sweaters. <laughs> but it'd be just my luck she'd learn to have sex and crochet at the same time. I'd end up with a bunch of sweaters, look like Michael J. Fox and Muhammad Ali started a sewing circle. <laughs> So I decided the perfect way to solve this problem was to let was to ask her to move in with me. Because I figured the perfect fix would be to let her see all this naked. <laughs> Which worked. Which means I ought to marry this girl, because apparently that kind of optimistic gullibility does not come along often. <laughs> Gotta hold on to it. So she's actually a Caucasian young lady, white girl, you know, and there shouldn't be nothing wrong with that in this day and age. And her sister was actually briefly married to a black man as well. And I was sitting with her parents one day, joking around, and her mom just jokingly was like, you know what, between the two of them, I would love to have at least one white grandbaby, just one. <laughs> and then we moved in together and her toy box fell open, and y'all know what kind of toys I'm talking about. <laughs> and based on the contents of that toy box, her mom is never gonna have a white grandbaby, not even imaginary. <laughs> so. Tell you one more thing, I'm gonna get out of here. I've learned in my 42 years that we've tended to dumb things down in this country. Like we've accepted lower stuff. And it's confusing to me. I don't understand it. You know? Like for instance, by round of applause, how many people here have ever played the game Words with Friends? Played it? Heard of it? Me too, me too. Let me ask you all the question. Didn't we already have Words with Friends? Like wasn't it called Scrabble? <laughs> but did Scrabble become too hard to say? Come on guys, let's play some scray. I just want to play words with my friends! <laughs> We've even allowed it to dumb down the way we inspire ourselves, motivate ourselves into action. Think about it, what do we used to say? Carpe diem. 
which was Latin for seize the day, a beautiful flowery phrase. Makes you want to stand up on a desk and go, Captain, my captain. Yeah. Oh, what, really? The black guy is the only one that saw Dead Poet Society, really? <laughs> No, we had to dumb that down to the bare facts. Well, you only live once. <laughs> like I hear that, and I, just, I hear that somebody saying that, and I want to go, really? You only get one of these? Like I can't put in a cheat code and get more lives. What is it? Up, down, up, down, right, left, A, B. I don't know, because extra sketches didn't have fucking cheat codes. <laughs> and then we had to dumb that down even further to YOLO. YOLO. <laughs> Which, if you ask me, sounds like a mentally challenged redneck trying to say the color yellow. <laughs> Uh, could you pass me my YOLO crayon? I want to draw the sun. <laughs> well, maybe I should just draw it blue. I mean, you only live once. YOLO! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Phil Porter. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show.